Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are in the world. This is Howie, and I'm here to help you win with money. In this episode, we are going to do the weekly summary for week number 10. The trading week is over. Here's the closing values on Friday. On Friday, the market ended relatively flat. The Dow hit a new record again. It's been on a streak. NASDAQ had a rough week, but it did recover slightly. Anyway, I'm going to go straight into the E-Trade trading log. First thing you're going to do is open my spreadsheet, which is my tracker. Look for the last day and then figure out what transactions are missing. So I need to paste in everything from Monday. So here's Monday, March 8th. There is some weird thing with uh, Rocket. It did some adjustment because of a cash distribution. I'm going to paste. Copy, paste, copy March 9, paste, copy, paste, March 10, paste, more March 10. And I'm going to paste March 10. So let's grab March 11. Here is March 11. Copy that. Paste. Paste. Grab March 12. Paste. And I grab the last of it. And we're going to paste that. So first thing I want to do is check everything first. Okay, I did my normal massaging, filled in all the gaps. I think I did everything right. I double checked it. I cross-referenced some of the strategies against the description. So I think I'm good. I label all the numbers. So I'm up to 349 now for the week, week number 10. So the first thing I want to do is I like to go into the pivot. The pivot is the fastest way for me to catch any errors. So let's hit the refresh and then take a quick look and everything looks good. So normally what I do is I don't like displaying two months of data. So I always display just one month. So I can do that now. So you can see how the data just got up, updated, hit the refresh. And I just want to do a one look over just to make sure everything looks okay. I think I noticed an error. I think I found the missing rows. There you go. It was a couple rows missing from March 1st. I just noticed that. So I went and double check some of these here to make sure I didn't miss paste anything. Because sometimes I can paste the same data twice. Or So I looked at it manually. I can check it. So now this looks much better because I can tell when the data is off. And because I'm breaking down into different buckets, I can tell if the data is off. So this looks much better to me. I don't see any errors at, at this point. Okay, came over here. I made sure I hit the refresh button. Everything looks good to me. I don't see anything weird over here. I'm going to copy these numbers here. These shouldn't really change much. Yep, that shouldn't change much. You see that? None of that should change because that was, that was the data from last month. And actually... I'll show you how that one happened. You see, this number got updated because I added one week of data now. So you can see how that works. So next thing I'm going to do is copy this value, go back to the pivot, scroll over here. So the beauty of this one is you paste that over here. Everything does it for you. So now let's just populate some of the numbers in here. This is now 349. This is goes here. Profit per trade goes here. So you can see how the numbers are starting to change. So I finished updating this. I did 30 trades in this week. Total number is 349. And here's the number for the week. My average is moving up slightly. So that's a good week. I think we're doing well. So everything looks like it's been fixed. 30 trades, 349, 13,000. 
the average has been slightly up just a dollar more this week what I do is this is not a average for the whole week this is a year to date average because what I do is if you look at the numbers I take this number for the average for the year and divide that by the trade so over time these things bounce but towards towards week number 40 and 50 the numbers get tighter and tighter and the ranges it gets smaller and smaller so let's look at some of the some particular trades in detail the first one is I'm gonna look at my cash secure puts you notice that this week which is in this color this is last week orange orange is last week this this week cash to curve puts really didn't do a lot it only added two hundred thirty nine dollars and I can explain why cash to curve puts like Riot and, and rocket both reverse direction and I had to now adjust them or roll them forward and collect a small premium so these are now I already made all the money on those if you look back here all the money so this is the prior week orange is prior week and if you look at the value you see how much money I made last week orange so 1700 bucks and so this week because those stock reversed you're not gonna expect to make a lot of money and that's okay this is why you play four or five different strategies at the same time so when it was hot and I bet on it I made money now I'm just trying to not lose and not give back all my gains so I'm gonna slow roll it and keep on rolling it out and then down for these I'm gonna roll down towards the market price or get away from it so eventually I'll exit out of those positions the next thing I want to look at is cover cost for MJ this is my marijuana ETF and you can see I played it multiple times this week small gain $87 but if you look at it from the last four weeks it's still not bad it's a $400 from cover calls and don't forget I overpaid for this thing marijuana MJ I paid uh, $33 a share because I bought it at the peak and if you add the $400 that means you know I don't care how you look at it but I made $400 even if I overpaid for it if you add the $400 you can say your cost base is 39 I mean not 29 but I don't do it that way because the go is you make money you use the cash and then somehow you lump the cash to do something else let's look at another one here you can see I did fastly I did two moves this week and if you just do this I made hundred and forty one dollars just by rolling up and out you see that last week I did a combination of rolling down and in because my my option contract was really far away so I moved it in from June you see that it was hundred and ten so remember what I was telling you in a previous video I'm gonna roll the shorten the date so I can start playing it every week and exactly what I just did I played it every week and you can see by doing that I made money but even rolling it in here was still the right move because if you look at the last let's say three weeks I made 400 bucks just from rolling options closer to the market price and then keep on rolling back again so you can sit there and do nothing but if you sit there and do nothing sometimes you're not maximizing anything whatever you collect it that's all you get and you can see most of these times when I'm rolling I'm not losing any money I'm actually making money by rolling so in this case fastly makes sense that's why I do it I'm gonna double check something I just I just fixed some data down here on the types but I want to make sure I didn't mess something up oh I did you see that the numbers did change so I did mess something up I think this is more accurate I did fix this up so I'm so let me just copy this real quick this looked like the real number that I just fixed and there you go if I did it right you see that I just hit refresh I was missing one day of data and I didn't even notice that but this is what the difference is I uh, it's minus 733 so that this is the official number for the week so let me just fix it real quick and here you go you see the numbers are just a little bit lower not by much but it's it's enough to it's enough to fall in line where it should be and so this is the official number here okay well I'm glad now 
So this is why you got to know your data. I know, I, I just noticed that there was something missing. I was missing one day of data here, which is the 12th. But now everything looks like it's in. Everything looks good to me. I, I don't think I'm missing anything. I double check a lot of those. And then the last thing I'm going to look, look at is the iron condors. Really, Visa was not a good trade. But what really saved me was the S&P or the S SPYs. You see how many new iron condors I created? This was the new. Then I closed the previous one, created a new one. I rolled the Visa because that was horrible. Closed the previous one, opened a new one, closed some. And you'll see that this is starting to pick up steam. As I make more profit, I'm upping the contract. So I instead of doing two or three, I'm going to do four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm going to eventually start moving these numbers up. So that brings us to the end of this video. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, comment below. Let me know how you're doing. Again, my strategy is slow and steady, nothing fancy. I'm just trying to do something simple. I do take profit from one sets of trades to help offset some of my other trades. And I try to keep the data to tell me what's working and what's not because eventually it will tell you not to play a certain style or at least at certain timing and eventually you learn how to get better at it. And that's what I'm trying to do. It's not like Visa is bad. I made a lot of money on Visa, but I'm learning that SPYs are just a little bit easier for me. Sometimes you have to avoid earnings or you gotta avoid the big run-ups. And that's the hardest part. When when do you know when the share's gonna run up, run up again? So that's what I'm trying to do. It's just track the data for myself. If you wanna reach out to me and chat, you can ask a question, come to an Investing 102. Investing 102 is a great place for me to hang out at. I, I believe in this concept of leveling up. And 101 is nothing wrong with 101 thinking. You can just index your way to wealth. And I think uh, for 90% of the people, that's what you should do. But for others who want to do indexing on top of other strategies like DGI, DRIP, if you want to do options trading, derivatives, if you want to do hedging, if you want to do other stuff, that's what you do. And I talk a lot about that in this concept of leveling up. It's not that 101 strategies don't work, but there are many ways to get there. You just have to pick a strategy that works for you. So with that, let's do this together. Let's do this $1 at a time and have a profitable week. Bye-bye.